Hello, everybody. Is this everybody, Andrew, do you think? Does everybody make it on? Okay, great. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tamara Christensen. My son is now drumming up in his room, so that's something he's learned in Valley Forge. So I apologize for that noise. Um, <laughs> Sasha, seriously. Oh, my goodness. He's learning that in field music, so uh, if your kids are interested in drumming, too, this is the skill that they can bring to your home. Um, my name is Tamara Christensen. I'm the parent company president. I'm also a mom of a 10th grader in the fall. And um, I'm really excited about having you guys here. I'm going to pause myself for just a second to see if my son will stop. Hold on just one second. Hey, Janine. Janine is my vice president of the parent company. Janine, what Hi there. Great. I'm so excited to have you on the call today. We have such a great group of parents. So Janine, take, tell us about your story. Sure. Um, believe it or not, my son is uh, in the fall going to be in ninth grade. We actually were a mid-year family that just started in January of 2020. Um, my son was struggling in the public school system, and we knew we needed some kind of solution. Um, it was, things were just kind of falling apart at the seams. We didn't really know what we were looking for in a solution, and we ended up bumping across, well, as I was doing my research, uh, Valley Forge and the website, and there was this open house, and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna do it. We went to the um, open house, and shockingly enough, we walked in that day, only to see um, Tamara and her family um, there participating in the open house, and then all of a sudden, these little light bulbs are going off in our head going, wait a minute, we've seen them before. Um, and that's because both of our sons back in the third grade were in the same scout troop in our area. So um, hopefully today, well, we want you to ask questions. I can tell you now, I had reservations about sending my son there because I thought, oh, we'll, we'll, be, a, you know, we'll be a day student. We'll just go there Monday through Friday. And, and bring them home on the weekend. Um, it's and Janine, yes. Is there a fan on in your room or something? Your voice keeps coming in and out. It's, and I want to um, hear everything you're saying. No, there's not. But let me, um, let me see. Let me turn up my volume and see if that helps. And while Janine is, is working on her, because I'm wrong. sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. No, it's okay. I just want to remind everybody that tonight's call is recorded. We had some families that weren't able to join us tonight, so we recorded it for them. So I just wanted to pop in and mention that. So go ahead, Janine. No, not a problem, not a problem. Um, we're, we're really glad that you guys are taking the, the, um, the call today, too, because quite honestly, it's one thing to go through all the steps and hear all the different things about Valley Forge from the staff and the people that are on board, but it really hopes to connect with you as a parent. And I can tell you now that all the reservations that I had about sending my son to the school, even though we were excited in one element and we were scared in the other, I can tell you that in, six, in not even in the six weeks of going through the police system, my son is a complete. Did Janine freeze for you guys? <laughs> yeah, no, okay. no. I think, it might, I think it might be their internet connection. It's I'm so sorry about that. So you guys hear her? That, and I hope I didn't freeze up in my connection. You did. But, you did freeze up for a second, Janine. We were just. Ah, no, I'm going so sorry. Um, but just, you know, we're here to help you. We're here to ask those questions that maybe you didn't feel comfortable because it was, you know, that it wasn't either going the direction you want or you remembered a question after you got off of one of the other sessions. Um, and don't be afraid to ask. Don't think that your questions are stuck because the dumb questions are the ones that aren't asked, in my opinion. So um, feel free to ask away. Um, we're, we're here to help you, to help and help you along with this path. Um, I'm, I, I have no regrets. I would do it over again in a New York second. So thank you for coming and joining us tonight. Awesome. Thanks, Janine. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah, my son is struggling in public system as well, and he is bright, it's intelligent, but he has self-management issues. So 
most of the time it's behavior issue. Yeah. So that's why I'm looking for solution. <laughs> so uh, what, what changes you, you, you have seen your son make and um, how he improved? So, so I, can, I, can, you know, my camera, can I can I answer that real quickly? Um, well, I can tell you my, my son, and I'm not afraid to share this, he is high functioning autistic. So he struggled in the typical learning environment. And I can tell you that because of the smaller classroom, the structure they give these kids and what they do for them, they take the time. Each and every teacher there cares about your, your cadet, your young man, your student. And they pour into those kids. And let me tell you, my son is excited now to go to school. He wants to learn. And that's a complete change from where we were. He was overwhelmed in the public school system with a variety of things that constantly changes. So it, it made a big difference, I'm telling you. And I, I will preach that to the day I die um, because it has been a phenomenal experience. Yeah, so um, our, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> oh, fantastic, we're here to help you. So did you, did you uh, was, was your son willing to come to this school at the beginning? Actually, he was. Ours was a family decision. Um, we sat down and all talked about it. He knew he wanted to change as well. So you know how they talk about the five cornerstones of the school. The one element that the school will not give your child, but your, your child needs to bring to the table, is the personal motivation. If they want to change, and they apply themselves, and they're open to that. And look, you don't have to come in going, oh, yay, a paper, a paper. But, you know, if, if they're just open and being open to the change and to the process, I promise you, you will, you will see a different child. Go ahead, Andrew. I'm going to mute. Hey, all, I'm Andrew Erickson. I work at Valley Forge. And I also, 20 years ago, went to a military school. And when my parents said, hey, we wanted you to go look at this military school, I had very just awful thoughts. I was like, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm sure I said it in a very different, inappropriate way. And then we went and looked at this thing and it was very different than life at home. And essentially we just match a cadet up with your son as you come look around the campus. And so the adults go talk and then the kids go talk. And as little Andrew walked around the campus, there was a whole different language. There was this order that didn't exist in my life. And it really brought me into, oh, this is okay. It's not just people yelling at me all the time. Because it's not. You, you can't yell at kids all the time and expect anything to ever happen. There's a lot of love and there's a lot of concern. And there's a lot of just help and backing them up and challenging them. And I saw that as a kid on that tour. And I, I didn't want to leave my friends. I didn't want to leave my mom's cooking. I didn't want to leave my room. I didn't want to go share a room with some kid from somewhere else. And it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And it all starts with kind of coming to campus and walking around and looking at it. It's so interesting that you, you did that, Andrew. It's like you were with us on our tour. <laughs> like, you know, it's like our experience is so similar because um, our son, um, who's um, going into 10th grade, was, is a really smart young man. Sounds like your son too, right? Really smart, very capable. Um, he's, he's in Boy Scouts. He's almost an Eagle Scout by the time he's in eighth grade. So that's pretty fast. He's very goal oriented. But for some reason in the middle of eighth grade, his grades started dropping and he started not turning in his assignments. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that where you're trying to chase your kid because they say they turned it in, but it's not really in the school that you're trying to figure it all out and it's crazy. And it was really unpleasant. He was getting angry at home. And so everything was kind of falling to pieces. It, it wasn't, it wasn't the the parenting story I had in my mind was not playing out from our reality. So we walked around the campus of Valley Forge and we were led by this man who stood tall and he was proud and he was very articulate and he answered every question and then some. And he used sir and ma'am and he was super polite. And I thought to myself, wow, there's very few parents I know that wouldn't want their son to be like this guy. Yeah. You know, he was amazing. 
and he was such a great representative for the school. And our son too was not super thrilled, just like Andrew's story about going to a military style school that didn't really appeal to him. But after we walked the campus, he said, you know what, I wanna give it a try. I wanna try this. I, and I go, I was like shocked. I was like, really? And he said, everyone was so nice here. I could see myself doing really well here and thriving here. And I think it's the difference between the environment he was at, he wasn't thriving and he wasn't happy. And so now being at Valley Forge, he stands tall. He leads those tours that I went on. He's there leading the tours now. And he is a leader and he has risen to the to be a leader in the company that he's in. And yes, as the drumming was evident earlier, he's gotten to try on things that he never did in public school because in our public school, even though it's a fantastic public school, if you're not in the band when you're in fourth grade, you don't really get a chance to get into an instrument. In his six weeks in plebe training, he got into field music and he learned to drum <laughs> and, he, and he learned to play the trumpet and he got to try that stuff on and he gets to try to be a leader and he gets, he's gotten to go into all these different clubs. He's gone to places that I never even knew existed. He, he told me one day, he texted me, he said, I gotta go cause I'm packing. And I go packing for what? He goes, I'm packing to go to New York. I'm like New York, New York city. Like what are you going to New York city for? And he goes, well, I'm going to be standing guard at the dinner of Vers the Versailles dinner. And I'm like the Versailles dinner. <laughs> I've never heard of that. So I get a picture later of my son in a full dress uniform in New York at this, this dinner, this first side dinner. And he is standing guard. He looks a little hot because it's a, the dress uniform is a little bit warm. Um, and he apparently was, uh, the, I was told the Archduchess of Hungary was really taken with my son. I'm like, really? So like, so, and he's gotten to meet, like gone to prayer breakfast at the, um, in, in, our, in the state capitol and met senators and Congress people. And he's had a chance to do a STEM week at Temple, two weeks at Temple um, that he got selected to go to. And he got to do that last summer. So he's had all these amazing experiences that we would, I never even knew these experiences were possible. And he's done that all at Valley Forge in just the year and a half that he's been there. It's just an, it's an amazing school. Um, the customized classes as Janine has, has said, you know, we came in, struggling with homework we surely didn't expect six weeks in for the teachers to inform me that the reason why Sasha was struggling was because he was really smart and he was bored and he needed to be in honors classes and, and I go what honors classes I'm like he can't turn his homework in like are you sure and he they said absolutely every teacher on the table said he needs to be in honors classes and you know what, this year he's in honors classes, all honors classes, and he's taking class ahead. And he's take, and he signed up to do two math classes. And this is a kid that was struggling when he was in the public school, but because the class sizes are small and the teachers really pay attention to customizing a plan that works for your son, it makes all the difference. And it's just, it's been an incredible opportunity for him. And I, it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, thank goodness. I, you know, it could have gone along a lot of different ways to try to get him to a place where he thrives. And I know, and for us, the financial part of it was a consideration. I'll be real. But I told him and we told each other, like, if this is the place that thrives, it's worth every penny to see him have the confidence, the skill set, the poise and the leadership that he has at Valley Forge. And we would do it all over again, a hundred times over. It's an amazing institution. Well, quickly. Um, and to, to add on to that, um, when my son moved from the public school to Valley Forge, it, his math level class raised two levels. So I was very concerned. He went from a basic math to algebra one in, in eighth grade. And I was like, oh, I don't know how well he's going to do in that. He, he ended up with all A's in the last marking period. So believe your son. It, I think it's capable, and you probably see it within yourself, when yourself, or you wouldn't probably be here with us today, considering Valley Forge. I'd love to also hear from you, like what some of the th what are some of the things that you might have questions? What are some of the things that you that concern you, or you know that would get you to make that final decision that says, you know what, I'm definitely um, ready to do that. I'm sorry, Melissa. I know you're struggling near me. I turned my volume all the way up and I apologize that you can't hear me very well. 
I'll go back on mute, Tamara, and I'll let you go from there. <laughs> okay. Do you guys have some questions, Melissa or Jackie or? No questions? Oh, really? I've got plenty. I just don't want to monopolize the time. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Jump in. Um, well, one, one question I would have is, um, like, do you have any tips for supporting the transition, for helping your child make a good transition into that fall? Like, in, you know, the first time they come home after being a plebe for six weeks and getting to come home and have favorite meals and then going back. So do you, just, do you have any general tips? I, I do. do. So um, first of all, I will tell you a thousand times it's harder for you <laughs> than it's going to be for him. My son, I think we dropped him off and at some point he looked back at me and was like, are you still here? Like, you know, <laughs> because he was, when we, we talked about the opportunity, you know, and, and I would say as the transition, you know, you talk about the opportunity, not how much you're going to miss them, right? Talk about getting, I call it sucking up all the awesome, right? In whatever you're going to do in life, you want to go into a situation and actually absorb all the awesomeness that you possibly can. So what that means is I encouraged him not to stay in his room, not that he would, He's, he tends to be somebody who likes to get involved, to try to get involved in different stuff, try out for field music, drive me crazy with your drumming, do, you know, do all those things, try them out. You know, that we've got a religious, you know, the, the opportunity to take, um, we have uh, Captain Hale does Bible study once a week. He got involved in that. I didn't know any of this, he just came, when I picked him up for recognition weekend, he then started in on all these things that he's doing. I had no idea how he had time to do his studies and to do all the activities. But I would encourage, encourage your sons to get involved and to try it all. Because they may not stick with it all, but it doesn't matter. At, at Valley Forge, that's what it's about. It's about trying things on, seeing what works, seeing what you love, and then go on. And it's really wonderful because even sports, my son had never been in sports. But he decided he wanted to go to Annapolis, to the Naval Academy. I know. I was surprised too, Melissa, but that's currently his dream. I mean, shoot big, right? I mean, that's great. So he read up on the successful candidates for the Naval Academy. And one of the things is that you have to have varsity letters in two sports. So he tells me, I'm going out for varsity sports. And I'm like, that's fantastic. You don't do any. Like, what are you going to do? And he goes, well, I'm going to try and I'm going to work really hard and I'm going to go out for soccer and I'm going to go out for swimming. And I said, that's awesome. Go for it. You know what? He didn't start at the beginning, but by the end of the season, he had varsity letters in both of those sports. And that's because Valley Forge allowed him to try. You know, in, his, in our current school district, if you're not playing soccer by the time you can walk, you're probably not going to be on the team, right? No, Are you, awesome. Jackie knows what I'm talking about, I think. And it's hard, right? If you, you want people to have all these experiences and Valley Forge allows you to try things on. It also allows you to try leadership on, which is really important because sometimes when youth are trying to lead other youth, sometimes that looks amazing. And a lot of times it looks like a hot mess, <laughs> but they have really amazing people like Colonel Rivera and like the tax and, and Dr. Lee to teach them how to be better leaders. They learn from their mistakes. So the other part about the transition is every day one of the alumni so we have the one some of the best alumni in the whole world and they are just the most talented group of men um, who de devote their time talent and treasure back to the school to really help it be a great school and one of them advised me to write a letter every day um, so at first i thought that was for sasha but what i'm telling you is it's really for you <laughs> it was a way for it was like a therapy <laughs> for me I had an application on my phone. It's a postcard app. It's called PostSnap. And I could be anywhere and I could be missing Sasha and wanting to tell him something. And I could put a picture in of his tortoise or his sister or whatever on this postcard, write a little thing, and then it would send for me. And it was so easy. And uh, it was therapeutic for me because I was missing him. You know, we, I was used to him being around all the time. So that was really helpful. Um, I also sent, you can send care packages. They don't like them to be loaded up with lots of really heavy duty sugary stuff during the plea process, but you can send stuff. 
and uh, Amazon Prime. I don't know how many of you are Amazon Prime lovers, but I am. I, I wish I had stock. Uh, they send directly to campus. And so in two days, <laughs> your son can have something that they want. So in the winter time, I sent him, it was January when Sasha went into the plea process. So I sent him some wool socks because the one of the alumni said that's really helpful. A lot of times that they're walking and doing tours outside, that having some nice, really warm wool socks would be nice. So I sent that. So I sent him some little stuff like that, and then also sent him some treats for his birthday. And we have cookie cakes for birthdays that you can send. So there's different stuff that you can do and you'll survive it. Like I said, Melissa, it's harder on you <laughs> than it is on them. They're so busy and they're making friends and they're having a, you know, like a really amazing experience and, and they are probably, it's probably easier on them than you. I, I did the same thing. I wrote a letter every day. And Melissa, can you hear me any better? No, you're really, I don't know what, you should have your um, techie husband give you your his headset. <laughs> yeah, do you, true. Janine, do you have a pair of like headphones you can plug in? I feel like maybe it's the connection. So I don't know if having more direct input of the sound would help. I have, that's a good point. Let me see if I can get this. Um, we want to, we want to hear you. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have questions? <laughs> well, I just, I just got on, um, I can't even get on Zoom because it was asking me for passwords and stuff. So, and my internet's acting up, so I had to dial in. Oh no. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think I was so upset, like, I had to call Comcast before we got on, and they hung up on me, and then I called again, now they got me on hold, so I just hung up with them. Aw. Well, you're coming in really good on your phone, so that's good. That's good. That's good. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Go ahead. So, I, I know a lot of boys nowadays have ADHD or some autism, whatever. So does the school have any supporting program for them? Yes. Yes, they actually have a resource support classroom. Um, and if you can't, I hope you can hear me, but uh, yeah, they do have a, a resource support class. And if your child did have or previously had, that will be required. They, they turn it into the school has their own learning and it works. Did you guys did you guys understand what she said? Okay, so the school has if your son's coming from a public school where they had an IEP, like a, an educational support plan, um, the the school has they will convert that to an educational support plan for the school so that they get extra help and then they have extra resource support as well. Um, and I know you mentioned that maybe your son had challenges, and as did mine, organizing their time. I, how many of your sons have some struggle with organizing their time well? Yes, okay, even Aaron. Yeah. Aaron too. So um, what I loved about that was what I told, I told Lauren Wojcik, who was the um, dean for our part of the academy, the lower academy, and said, you know, Sasha has a hard time, like, organizing his time well. And so she was able to connect him with a resource at the school and they got a small group of cadets together that all had that same struggle. And they went through some extra support for a few, you know, like until they felt like they really had mastered that skill set. Um, is he the most organized person I've ever seen right now? No, but he's, he's getting better. He's definitely improved. And so what I love about that is that they're constantly working with you and with your, your, your son try to make sure that you Support. We need to mute one. Yeah, we need to mute somebody, Andrew. Andrew's Andrew's our master in control up there. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's I love that because when I I didn't expect that, I didn't realize that would uh, be possible. And then they also, if your son, I know a lot of sons um, are taking medications of various kinds or vitamins. And they have a really amazing medical team and they dispense the medication and make sure everybody's taking it on time. By, and if you have vitamins, like if you have a special vitamin you want them to take or an allergy, like my son had some seasonal allergies, made sure he took that every day. And they just kind of take everyone, goes up to the med center together and they get their stuff and then they go off to class. So um, it's a really, it's a good process and the medical team is a really great group of people. 
Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Do uh, either of your sons do uh, the five-day boarding option as opposed to the full-time? If, if they do, I'm just, again, I'm worried about making sure that if we do this, that we have a really good transition and, you know, is coming home on the weekends at all problematic for the kids or can they handle that? So I think that, so I'm going to, I'll, I'll say that our kids are not, there's not very many people who take advantage of that option. And I'll be honest with you, as we work with um, the Corona situation, that five day boarding and the day student stuff maybe look different in the fall because I know they're trying to, Andrew's shaking his head, uh, we're trying to make sure everyone stays well. So every time someone goes back home, they have a chance of being infected and bringing it back to campus. And we really wanna keep everyone well. So I'm not exactly sure what the five day program is gonna look like in the fall, but I would say, oh, Andrew's saying no, no. <laughs> yeah, I would say that you may want to consider that that may not be an option for this fall just because of the current pandemic. We want to keep your, we want to keep your son safe and healthy. That's our number one concern. Um, we are from out of state. We are in California. So my son probably will stay there in the weekend, right? Yes. Yes. Jackie, did you, I'm sorry, Deanna, did you have a question? Yes. So with that being said, who exactly is on campus with the boys 24 hours a day? So that's a great question, Deanna. Um, we have some amazing um, people who are called their TAC officers. And so their whole job is to make sure that your sons are well taken care of. And this year, I believe um, we're gonna be um, in, they live in the barracks. Like there's somebody, they don't live in the barracks, but they're in the barracks with your sons the whole time. So there's someone always there to take care of everybody, make sure things are going. In addition to that, um, the way that Valley Forge is really cool in the leadership as aspects is that they have youth leaders who are also trained to help the people that are in their groups. So they're, di they're divided up by different companies. So for example, there's C company and B company, and there's E battery, which are the motorized vehicles. And so those different in like regimental band is one. So they're all kind of like sectioned off by their groups and they have youth leaders that help make sure everything's going okay. And then those youth leaders are supported by these TAC officers. And then we have this really amazing commandant of cadets called Colonel Rivera. I don't know if you got a chance to go to his, his fireside chat, but he is an amazing man and he's helping lead that entire team. Okay. One said that the kids um, for the fall, the upcoming fall, will most likely have to stay the seven days, you know, just to kind of contain everything. I was wondering how that same notion applies to staff. Like, the, is there like a set staff that lives on campus or is everybody going back home and coming? No, so that's a great question. So our TAC officers, most of our, um, a lot of our, our staff have housing on campus. And so they are on campus and they stay on campus. Um, like we have some houses around the perimeter of the property. So everyone, um, yeah, that would stay. And, and that's really the way it works now too. We, most people are there seven days a week and they stay there all the time. And then they go home for an occasional weekend. And then our staff lives on campus. A lot of our staff, not all of our teachers, but the TAC officers and like Colonel Rivera and Colonel Helgeson and, Dr. Lee, they all have housing on campus. That makes sense. Thank you. So, um, like for the holidays, like for Thanksgiving, they'll will they well that's still the fall. So, how would that that that's only like two days, so they may not be able to come home because, like you said earlier, right? Right. So in the fall, so this is going to look different in the fall, and I I appreciate your willingness to chat about this because. Right now we're kind of, we don't know what the virus is going to be like in the fall. We can, ask, we can guess what it might be like in the fall. But what I've loved about Valley Forge and the way they've handled this is that every time we've had another piece of information, Dr. Lee and Colonel Helgeson and Colonel Rivera have gone together and they've come up with a plan to really work on keeping our, our sons safe. And I really have appreciated that. Um, and they've really tried to communicate very effectively out what we're going to do. So I that Andrew, I think, posted a link to a document that came out in FAQ 
It's our COVID response. Um, that has a lot of information about it. So on the holidays part, so normally you would earn, you would earn your ability to come off campus and you could go to Wayne and you could walk out. But because of the virus, if it continues being challenging, we're not gonna let cadets go off campus and get potentially reinfected by people in Wayne, right? We're not gonna do it. So, right. so then the other thing that could happen, you know, it could, will it affect Thanksgiving? I don't know. Um, we, you know, I, it's possible, right? To keep that, and I know that's not bad, but to try to keep people safe, that may be different. So we just, I don't think they know yet about that. But the other, the other options, they may limit the ability to take cadets off campus. Okay, thank you. And parents, want, go ahead. We want your kids to be safe. That's the whole thing. And that's can, right. Can parents we see? So I think that we're gonna. It's gonna be very limited visiting, um, especially if the virus continues like it is. Now, if the virus all of a sudden magically kind of goes away, then we're going to be dealing with something different and we're going to reformulate the plan. But right now it's hard, you know, it's hard to know how that's going to be um, because it looks like it's going to be around to stay. So they would, they would limit the, the visitations and anyone coming new onto campus that because you could potentially infect cadets or staff. Melissa, did you right. have a, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Andrew, are you paying attention messages and in the chat window. Are you okay? Good. Okay. Go ahead. But if not the COVID-19, we assume that next year it, it goes away. So kids can uh, go off campus weekly during weekend or they are free to go home during weekends? So yeah, so what happens is there's open weekends and closed weekends and we, um, so if you if your son is not on academic probation or hasn't had some massive challenge where he is getting um you know because if, if people make kind of larger mistakes and they get tours and maybe he wouldn't be able to go home but if it's a normal situation yeah on an open weekend he could come home you know on holidays he would come home and at winter break we have a nice long winter break and he'd come home for that so and then we usually have a spring break and then there's times when we have parent weekends Usually we do that in the fall. We have a parent weekend where we all get together and we have a lot of fun and, and we celebrate each other's sons and the ones that just got made it through the plea process, we're very excited about those. And then the rest of us all get together because once you become part of Valley Forge, your family, your family, you, it's right, Janine? I mean, we're a Forge family, right? We, I mean, it's the, um, just the best parents, the best staff and the best, um the best cadets i mean it's just we cheer your son on if i'm there and i see jackie's son walking the hall then i take a picture and send it to her and if i see melissa's son and he's doing something amazing then i might take a video of him and send it to her and that's just what we do because we may be on campus and see your son and you may not have gotten a chance to see him recently so we do that kind of stuff because your family so andrew you said i was a student who went to military school i can't read what, what were you saying andrew Sorry, I'm trying to respond to everybody. Okay. <laughs> I think she's really concerned. Sorry, it's kind of behind in the conversation about being so far away and open weekends and things. I went across the country for military school. I just made friends with the kids that lived around there. Their moms fed me food. I got to go to the <laughs> couch. It all works out. I know the skeletons are really into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of we, as you might imagine, we had um, um, a large group of international cadets that couldn't travel back home because they were from China and Mongolia and different really awesome places, but they weren't able to get back home safely. So Valley Forge housed them, but then we had parents step up and offer to house them at their houses. And Janine had um, a lovely cadet stay at her house for what, a month or month and a month and a half? Two months, two months at her house. So. So we all band together, we're a family. And, and when people need us, we, we, we come to the occasion. Like I know lots of us were driving snack food over for those cadets because they're hungry. Those, <laughs> a cadet is hungry is a, is a common thing. 
So we were dropping off stuff for them so they would have things to eat in their barracks. Go ahead, Jackie, did you have a question? Yeah, can you talk about what the, the role of your parent association is and, and how, how you work and, and meet and um, work with the school and the teachers and whatnot? Is it just like yeah. PTAs and, you know, for regular school? It's, it's sort of like that. It, um, it's a little different too. So uh, we meet monthly. We have a monthly general meeting, and then we have a monthly executive board meeting, which is the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. That's mostly just to get ourselves straight and in order so that we're ready to go for the general meeting. We have a series in this, and I'll talk about the normal year <laughs> because the, the not, this, this new corona year is gonna be a little bit different, but in the normal year, we did things like, did um, uh, this, we helped the Spanish class put on Dios de las Muertas for, um, for the Day of the Dead celebration. So we helped bring in stuff for that, donuts and hot chocolate, like they did a pinata, you know, just stuff that would, would um, expand on the Spanish culture that they were learning in school. We did, um, they had a kind of a fall festival where we brought in gaming trucks and candy and they had all kinds of stuff all over the place. We supported that. So parents send in stuff for that. There's usually an Amazon wish list, so you can send stuff for that. Or if they need help, sometimes we go onto campus and support it. Obviously, Corona days look a little different than we did this last year. We do cadet, cadet love. We do, um, like we did at the midterms, we came in and we gave them kind of cadet love bags, which had snacks to fuel their um, studying. Um, we took pictures with people with their, like, I'm going to rock my midterm signs. And uh, we did when... Um, the mid-year plebes came in we did it was valentine's day we did valentine's day videos so moms and dads got this really nice video of their son telling him how much he loved them and missed them probably missed his mom's cooking and all the other stuff and sent that for valentine's day so we do a lot of those things trying to encourage the cadets trying to inspire them we also did an etiquette class which one of our parents uh, two of our parents put together um, we, we were able to teach the first part of it and then Corona hit. So we didn't get a chance to teach the part two, but that's coming um, in the fall. We also are connecting people with the alumni. We're working on a, um, a project where we're inviting alumni that are amazing. We have some amazing resources in our alumni association and asking them to do something about their career. Like what things did they learn from Valley Forge and then what how did that inspire them into their career? And then what path did they take to get there and be so successful? So really trying to connect people early to maybe somebody who might be a lifelong mentor. Um, I think that's gonna be super important. So we have a lot of different areas. We have one that we have a committee that works with the cafeteria to make sure that we have great food and that the variety is there and that the and that we're you know getting input from the cadets and that we're really making it the best possible. We had one, we have a committee that works on campus beautification. So we do days of beauty <laughs> where we come in and might help plant plants or maybe we help do something that where we can work shoulder to shoulder with the cadets and work shoulder to shoulder with the staff to try to make our beautiful campus even more beautiful. So we have a lot of different committees and this year with the Corona, we um, helped to do a lot of the presentations. So um, Janine's uh, married to a wonderful man who's very good at video and editing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Andrew agrees with that. Um, and so I worked with him to create awards presentations, the senior graduation. You know, it could have all been different or we couldn't do anything, but we were like, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna do it differently. So we did it all virtually. And it was really wonderful to see all of our parents and our graduates get on and be able to go, way to go, you know, and everybody kind of chit chatted afterwards and we celebrated that. We had some award ceremony, we had the eighth grade promotion ceremony. And we even have a, um, something that's unique to Valley Forge called the Dunaway competition. And that's a competition where speakers, where cadets decide, and this is, this is terrifying. If you think about this, if you were like a ninth or 10th grader and you were deciding that you were gonna be part of a speech contest <laughs> where you had to write a compelling speech on a topic that might be kind of a challenging topic. So, and you're gonna give this to people, a persuasive speech. So we had um, a gentleman who um, they tried out for it, they were selected and then Corona hit. <laughs> so they ended up having to turn all of that. Uh-oh, oh, that's my son. 
he, he dressed up for that. Um, yeah, so my son was in it too. Uh, and so they had to do it from home. So that was really a departure from what he thought he was gonna have to do. He thought he was gonna give a speech in the chapel to all of the cadets. And instead, we had to get out the video technology and the ring light and all this stuff to make it work for him. So that's a competition that's really an amazing tradition at Valley Forge that is just, I, I was really even, he didn't win, but it was a great opportunity for him to build some skills. Go ahead. I don't know if, if you guys have questions, go ahead. I don't want to take all the time, but, but if no one has questions, questions that I'll ask, go ahead. Who are the youth leaders and where do they reside? Are they like the college kids? So that's a great question. So some of the top leaders in the Corps of Cadets are, are college age, um, but then there's youth leaders in the high school so for example, uh, Sasha, my son, is a C company in the C company, and that's um, a kind of a larger company um, that are the younger grades. So that's uh, seventh through ninth graders, but their captain is always a junior in high school, right? So, so they have the older cadets that are at the very top of the leadership command that command all of the core cadets, but then within the particular company that your son decides to be in they have youth leaders in there too and there's a lot of different positions some of them are just responsible for a small group of cadets others are responsible for two small groups of cadets and over those leadership so it, it so what it's really cool is that your son can grow as a leader um as he's able to and i love that because it's it really makes a big difference in your son's confidence and and in the ability to really learn how to lead people. I mean, they're having to live with these people. He's not just a leader once a week or once a month at a camp out like my son was in Boy Scouts. Sasha Christensen is a leader 24 by seven, whether he wants to be or not, right? Because he's living amongst his group. And if they've got problems and challenges, he has to be there for them. Does that answer your question, Deanna? Awesome. Did you have a question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I I can imagine the first two to three months may be the hardest for kids first attending the military school. So were there any uh, kids that um, quit in the first two, three months or school kid out any kids or, or how the school help the kids to survive for the first couple months? Well, I think, I think anytime you transition, like even if you're going to camp for the first time, right? those first three days are like the hardest, or I think so that happens. People get homesick, you know, people, there are people that come to the school that they didn't want to be there in the first place. And those, they have to come through a period of time where they decide that they're going to get with the program, right? And that they're going to be okay with that. And, and I think that's normal. I think it happens every time we bring in new cadets. Um, Andrew, do you have any words of wisdom on this too? Yes. So when you start all this, immediately they cut everyone's hair, we cut everyone's hair, <laughs> and that gives them all something to, one, complain about, and two, it gives them a physical indication that something has changed. And I don't, boys love their hair. When you cut it off, they get all sad and mopey. <laughs> so they immediately become, they have this shared experience with kids from all around the world now, and they've started to bond that day. And usually you and your roommate have this task of cleaning a room and organizing and learning things and everything's moving so quickly around you. You're just kind of bewildered trying to, to fit in. And within the first few days, unlike a lot of summer camps, most of them are kind of with the program and have figured it out because they didn't really have time to sit around and think, woe is me. And I mean, it's, it's military school is kind of like the, the army system and that you you don't do anything for anyone else you're doing it or for some ulterior motive you do it for your friends and the people that you're around and military school is totally like that like i to this day don't want to clean my room quickly you know and frantically and get it done but when i was a kid i would totally do it because if i didn't get my room clean fast enough then all my friends were going to suffer and they'd be like andrew why didn't you clean your room and it just it's very easy to for most of the cadets to get with the program Totally, we kick some kids out. People come with issues that our school, we're not a, 
therapeutic school by any means. And if parents aren't truthful about what's going on with their kids, while we have a lengthy application process, we get kids that we're not a good fit for. And so we help them find a different school to attend. And nine times out of ten, you, your your son is going to be like I said, that person with the motivation to get it. If they are even open to the process of change and making a difference for their future and becoming a leader, absolutely. Leadership is actually um, a course that's offered there on campus. Um, it's at least in the high school, so you have the ability. To, um, help your your child with some of the elective courses, just like you would in the public school. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Like, like for instance, like when they're in, he's in eighth grade, so it'd be like college prep classes, correct? Yes, yeah, so eighth grade. So that's what Sasha was taking too. Um, they'll come in and do kind of the basic stuff and then he'll have an opportunity probably to pull, take an elective. I know Sasha took leadership. Great, great teacher who teaches leadership. And that was like such a fun cause. You agree, Andrew? Oh my gosh, he's the best. Yeah, he's a coach and he's amazing. He does a trip in the, I'm going to talk about a couple of our trips just because it led me to this. Um, he's doing a trip to Costa Rica, which is like, the most amazing trip I can imagine. It's an extra fee to go to it, but it is like the equivalent of what I did in my MBA course, where we go and see what um, different businesses and like you're learning all different kind of aspects and you're gone for a week. And then I know Garrison Mott's taking another group of people to London. <laughs> and if you know Garrison Mott or if you saw his talk, he kind of like has an in <laughs> with uh, the whole London scene. So it's going to be amazing. So we have a lot of really cool opportunities through that. So um, lots of different things. Deanna, did you have a question? I saw you come off mute. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. What takes place in the chapel? So usually, um, that's a great question. So in the chapels where we do all a lot of our um, indoor ceremonies and award ceremonies, but every other week, right, Andrew, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we have a chapel service and there are young people, cadets, who are part of that service that become, you know, different people that help with that service. But it's usually a really amazing speaker, usually a leadership oriented speaker. So it's sort of, it's Andrew, right? Non-denominational, kind of a leadership speaker is the key speaker and it's supposed to be amazing. I, I've heard nothing but glowing reviews about, about that. Right, Andrew? Yes. You know, and my son said something about those going to those, and he never said anything. Anytime we talked to him or he wrote home, well, he didn't write home because he called it his home. But um, he loved them. He, he just said, oh, I hope that at some time in the future you can actually come to those. And hopefully, once we get over COVID stuff, maybe that can change. But, and yeah, he was very, very happy with the speaker. He was very inspired. There's been lots of really good leadership opportunities. Uh, that these kids are learning from, you know, leaders. It looks like Andrew has something to share. Go ahead, Andrew. <laughs> so it's not, it's more of a, a meeting place than it is a religious service, but we do promote, some of the students are very religious and we, we do encourage them to do that. Um, if you walk into it, it's a beautiful old chapel. It was featured yeah. in, you look at it, you're like, this is an old, like, Episcopal church. And, you know, we've had kids of the Muslim faiths speak in, in their language, so we couldn't actually understand what they were saying. And then they had to, you know, kind of tell us what they had said. And there's a statue of Mary in there for the Catholics. And they do things to support kids' faith, if that's something that, that is needed for the students. But it's, it's mainly about building character, and that's kind of how we use all of that. And Sasha loves the Bible studies, the weekly Bible studies he attends. I don't think it's just for the pizza. I think he, no, he, they, they have pizza and they have yummy food. I, again, cadets love food. That They love to eat. That's what I've gotten from my experience with the cadets. But um, he loves Captain Hale and he loves the Bible study and the group of young men that are there every week. So if that's something that your son is passionate about, then that's something that maybe he might be interested in. So, so does the 
Bible studies take place on Wednesdays? Yes, they did this last year. Um, I, I don't know if they're going to change that, Andrew. I, I have no idea. Yeah, we don't know. But yes, they, they were Wednesdays this last year. They were Wednesdays in the half year that we came in first. So, so for a year and a half, they've been on Wednesdays at lunch. So right, right now, every, everyone's at home now, right? Right, because it's um, right because now. The COVID. Yes. Well, right now, everyone's right. at home summertime but yes our cadets and so I'm going to tell you about how one of the things I'm really proud about the school and and how they demonstrated leadership uh, you know when corona came out in our state of Pennsylvania I know some of you guys are from different states our governor announced on the Friday that schools should close down for two weeks and so Dr. Lee I think because I don't know if he has a crystal ball or like he can read like how everything <laughs> to go or what it is but he had come up with a plan weeks before that on how we would go to online learning um and so oh. in his foresight which i thought was so incredible he had already laid out all the google classroom stuff and all the ways we would manage that so instead of us taking two weeks off because he didn't want to jeopardize any young man and their ability to graduate on time so instead of taking two weeks off, like the governor told us we could have, he launched right back in, didn't miss a beat, sent everyone home on Friday. And then on Monday, kind of got themselves together. And on Tuesday, they were already doing online learning. It was oh. unbelievable. unbelievable. Like in my daughter, my daughter goes to a cyber mm -hmm. school. They took two weeks off. I, I was like, why? You guys actually do this for, this is what you do. <laughs> And what, I was shocked over that, Pam. I was, I, I, let me tell you, for my son, other than a few hiccups, every day of an office hours, it was very structured. Yep. It was not some online, oh, you just kind of do this or do that. They had their, their assignments, they had their schedule, they had everything was very methodical and structured for an online um, classroom session. I was very surprised and how organized. I mean, such, yeah, yeah, such, such a strong leadership, such strong leadership. Never, you know, never missed a beat. Was it hard? Yeah, I'm sure it was hard for them, but they, they made it seem like it was easy that they had thought about this and, the, and, and it was just really, really well done. And people were well supported and people, yeah, they had to reach out to some people. Some people don't learn well online and, you know, learn better in person and they had to work with those students. But they really did a great job. I was really impressed by it. They also have an on, so now they have a partnership with a Citizens High School. They actually are offering online learning. So my son, because he's crazy, I think, instead of deciding he would just take the summer off, which is what I was kind of hoping, uh, he decided to go ahead and take his next year of history. <laughs> so he is up in his room right now trying to get through his 10th grade history class and it's all online so he could take a whole bunch of different classes in the summer or he can take he asked me if he could take another class during the school year and I said really have you lost your mind really we're going to take more <laughs> classes so so I think what I I, I want to stress is like how much the customization of your son's schedule is up to him and his motivation and his needs and what he enjoys doing and what works for him and that's made all the difference in our son and like what he's excited about. He's excited about Valley Forge. He wants to come back right now. And Colonel Rivera threw down a challenge and talked about the couch to 5K one night on a call and how we were going to be, you know, people were going to be running more. And my son's out in the middle of the night running. Like he, he's like, so that he could be super fit and, and make Colonel Rivera proud. And like, he's working on his fitness levels. And so he, my son's always been kind of fit, but he's never been that motivated. So I love that Dudley <laughs> Forge has brought that for him. He's, he wants to be a leader. He wants to set a good example for the people that he's leading. And he wants to do what Valley Forge wants him to do. And I, and I love that. I think it's really cool. So you never saw about all this would happen to him before? I really didn't. You know, I, I didn't. It was kind of like I had to kind of like take, we had to take a breath and go, I, it never occurred to me that my eighth grade son would be going to a boarding school. I never thought that would happen. And I had to just take a leap of faith and it was the best decision. And, and now look at my son. I mean, he's, 
he's risen to the, the occasion and he's doing so well at Valley Forge and it's what I want for all of your to find a place where they can thrive they can feel good about themselves and they can have that confidence and they can stand tall right and really believe they're so capable and the young men at Valley Forge are some of the best young men I've ever met and I'm excited that we get to I miss them I miss not seeing them on campus and seeing how they're doing and they're just great young men don't you agree Andrew we've got some amazing young men no, we really do. I tell you that my son right now is counting days till he can return to campus. And he said, exactly. Mom, no offense. I I love my home, but I miss being on campus with my son. Yeah. And that's all just happened since January. So it it, it is very possible. Right. And they have they make son. lifelong friends that are brothers. They're brothers to them. You know, Sasha went through a plea. Um, the plebe experience with a group of young men and he gets calls from them all the time. I think he gets more calls than I do um, just from his friends checking up on him and making sure things are going okay and talking about the year. Oh, who's, who's, oh, look at that. Awesome. Andrew's got all these cool pictures if you can see him. But yeah, it's really good. Deanna, did you have a question? Yes. What is the menu and is it like diverse and who determines it? So we have a cafeteria service, a food service company that provides that. It's my understanding we have a new food service company starting this fall, um, but I'm sure it's gonna work similar to what it's on the, there's a very diverse um, arrangement of food. Um, there's, you know, breakfast usually includes cereals and fruits and warm in, 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 the, in the winter times, right? When it's cooler, warm breakfast, like, like um, oatmeal or grits, you know, things like that. And then they also have, um, you know, eggs and bacon and things that kind or, or pancakes or whatever. And they have different ones. And the menu is published every, usually every week. And I post it, I usually post it in Forge Family, which is our Facebook group. Um, it's sent to me, we publish it. And then your cadets get it as well. And then it's also posted on our monitors around school, just so that they know what's coming up. And Sasha has his favorites. He'll get excited when there's last year's spicy tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwich was a, a favorite of his. Um, so they have different things every night and they kind of rotate through every, every, I think it was like every two or three weeks they would rotate through kind of a similar menu. What company um, was before? My, we had yeah, Sedexa. I'm sorry, awesome. Sedexa. Sedexa was our company before. I'm sorry. I'm like, um, Sodexo was our, uh, has been our food service company for a very long time. Um, and, and now we're transitioning to another company and I'm not sure who that company is. Um, but I feel confident with the selection process that we'll have a great company and that parent company has a connection with the food service. So when we have questions or concerns that we have a voice in how those are handled. So that's been something new that we started this last year and it worked really, really well. So and we have uh, some really great parents that work with the food service folks. Thank you. And for regards, oh, I'm sorry, Jackie, do you want to go ahead? Sure. Um, as far as the, the Boy Scouts go, how was the transition from, because um, you said your son was a Boy Scout and yeah. um, I'm assuming that he continued at Valley Forge. Um, how was that transition between um, the different troops and um, what has his experience been in um, the troop? Because I, I, we're coming from a very, very strong troop with very, um, very integrated uh, parents that are very um, supportive and volunteer all sorts of times. So um, I was just wondering, I knew that, that there is a family there that that leads a troop, but I was just kind of wondering about what that kind of dynamic looks like. So, um, yeah, so I can talk about that because I actually go on campus every week for the Boy Scout meeting. Um, I'm the advancement chair for the troop. So it's, uh, in Boy Scouts, you can be dual registered. So most of our Boy Scouts at the troop are dual registered with, so you would say registered in your current troop. In what state are you guys in? Maryland. Okay. So he would say registered there, and then he would dual register with our council here. 
And then that way we can continue working on his advancement and through um, some of the technology in Scouts, we can, we work on merit badges. We try to get him to the next rank. Um, we have three Boy Scouts right now that are going for Eagle. So we're working on Eagle projects. So Sasha's working on, I don't know if you got it, you've seen the museum, but Sasha's working on creating labels and um, scan barcodes so that he can, um, so that they can check things in and out of the, of the museum. So that's something he's working on. We have two other young men that are gonna be working, starting up their Eagle project soon. So that's something that's usually helpful because while your son may go to camp with your current troop, because he's there in the summer, for example, he might wanna do his Eagle project during the school year. And that's the piece that's really important because he may not have enough time in the summer to get his Eagle project done. So depending on what he wants to do. So um, you guys look closer than for example, um, some of our other families that live in California or Florida or something. So we can work with you on that. So we'll try to get him, work him on with the badges and get him to wherever he needs to be or wants to be. And then if he needs an Eagle project, we can work on trying to identify some options for him so that he can he can do that during the school year. Okay, great. We meet once a week, we meet once a week. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I had a quick question. Now sure. on eleven, is that going to be a a, a, a var? Is going to are we going to come to Valley Forge for the tour? Or is we going to do it like we're doing now? On July eleventh, we're having it on open house at the actual campus, and so okay. it's gonna, I, yeah, we're going to have okay. so see how beautiful the campus is. I hope I hope you'll come introduce yourself. I'll be there too. Um, okay. my my son will be there. Sasha, you'll see him. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to divide you guys into two groups probably so that we are socially distanced and so that one of you guys will be taking a tour while the other group is watching the presentation about Valley Forge. And what time does all this take place? What time we have to be there? Andrew, is it starting at 10? Do you know? 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Thank you. I'm excited. What's your name? I can't. What's, what's oh, your name? Uh, Virginia Heyman. Oh, Virginia, it's really nice to meet you. I'll look forward. I will look for you on the 11th. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, I plan to be there as well. So that'll be wonderful to meet. Awesome. Melissa, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to follow up just a little bit on the food question. You yeah. Got a really nice selection. That's great. So I do have a bit of a finicky eater, doesn't want to really get involved with fruits and vegetables. Um, so are there always choices? So yeah. like it's cereal some days and eggs some days or tomato soup some days and pizza some days, are there always options? There's always options. There's always a salad bar. There's, I mean, I'm gonna talk from our, my experience and then um, the new food service company may be slightly different, but I assume that they're gonna be similar and Andrew can correct me if I'm wrong here. But usually we have a salad bar so you can always pick something and it doesn't always have salad-y things, but like, you know, a lot of different variety on that bar. There's usually a soup always, but there's different soups. Um, there's there's always options, and there's always a bad. Or I won't call it bad. There's always like a fried, <laughs> like more fried, like more uh, what boys would gravitate towards eating. Those options are there always too. And then there's also healthy options. So we try to accommodate a lot of different things. There's also, I know they've accommodated gluten free issues and all kinds of things. So any kind of a food sensitivity or challenge that your your son might have where as long as we are communicated to we can accommodate those right andrew yeah, yeah. My, my son's allergic my, to my son desserts or peanut allergy and has no problems there at school none whatsoever yeah i don't think we do anything with peanuts i don't think no. i don't think no. there's any think that they are very cautious about that exactly thank you So Melissa, you were saying your son's allergic to peanuts or is she, yeah, and so that, that's hard, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's harder ones to manage, but it's just as a question. Yeah, at least that's one that most people have heard of and are like, have a plan for because that one's pretty, can be pretty serious for some people, so. Yeah. Is there a, like a baseline level of fitness that you recommend the boys start with um, so that they, that 
the transition's not quite so hard? You know, do they need to be able to run a mile or do push-ups or what do they need to be able to do so that, so that the... So Andrew's got a, uh, go ahead, Andrew. So kids come from all around the world and totally different levels of fitness. None of these guys, excuse me, most of these guys are not like great athletes when they start out. And our goal is for them to progress. Yeah. And so during the, you might have seen the photos of the crucible, which is this grueling, enduring, hard thing. It's, it's not really that hard, but it is for a 15 year old kid because it's this thing looming up. He's got to work toward, he's got to work toward. And kids that put the effort in are the kids that finish it. It's not about being able to run the mile or a certain amount of time. It's people who are progressing. So, I mean, he's going to, I mean, some of those elements, Melissa, will be, you know, obviously running, you know, the 5K. There's going to be, there's push ups, there's sit ups. Um, I don't know. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. <laughs> and this is Boylan, who's our activities director, has, that photo I just shared was a cadet. He came to campus and we shot some video of him doing all these different workout positions. And she's finishing up a video to be sending to all the future students and the current students to work on fitness over the summer. But we don't, we were not going to go send him home if he can't like <laughs> run a mile at a certain amount or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> I just didn't know if we could do anything over the summer to make the transition easier. I mean, I kind of would, especially if that's going to be something that's yeah. going to intimidate him. Like if you feel like he's going to get onto campus and go, oh, wow, I can't do, like if that's not going to be a positive experience, then certainly it never can hurt to work a little bit on fitness. Okay. I know you, I've been really impressed with the Valley Forge leadership team. I have seen some rocket pictures of them out working out in the weight room and like Colonel Rivera is doing the couch to 5K. And I, I don't think he's just bragging. I mean, he really like into this stuff. So like, it's really cool to see our leadership team doing all this stuff too. So um, I'm really, really proud of them. They're, they're awesome. Great leadership. Thanks you guys. Jackie, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, this is a pretty simple question. I feel stupid asking it, but the, <laughs> I can't find it anywhere. What is the start date for back to school? Uh, that just came out, Andrew. Um, I saw, I know leadership is August the 11th. Hold on a second. Do you have that? Do you have that? Yes, I do. I do. September 10th is the day the actual classes will physically start. But the plebes arrive earlier than that. That's Anna, correct. Anna told me September 2nd. That's, that's when they'll arrive. Plead training will start before the classes start. Okay. Right. So it says a hard question. August twenty second. Yes. The new cadets arrive. Yes. August twenty second for new cadets. So, it, the following year it would be later. Yes. They are coming in a couple weeks early to get out. Well, well, I say that, Jackie, but your son is probably a leader, and he would probably be, he might be selected for leadership detail, um, and if that's the case, he would actually end up having to report a week earlier than the plebes, because we do leadership training, and then that's when they select their, the, um, the different positions get selected during that time, so I would be prepared that your son might be selected for that, which is a great honor, and that he might have to, to go a little bit earlier. Okay, thank you. Are those are those dates final? I'm I'm just a little confuddled. I think those are the final dates now. I think that they um they had some different um they had some changes. Um Andrew, don't you feel like these dates are final? They just sent these out today. We've been trying to figure out how we're gonna do the how we're gonna socially distance everybody and make sure all the cadets are gonna be healthy before we get everything going. And right. we the start date of the school year back some and now we're going to move everything forward to accommodate for that so it's all working out but no one was expecting coronavirus never in a million years would I have expected coronavirus that's for sure so 
if they're going back, if they go back when you said August 22nd, right? Um, 20, was it August 28th, yeah. you say? With, August 22nd for all August the new guests. Yes. Okay. Um, so would there be, I'm assuming then like Labor Day, holiday, that is out the window. They just stay there continuously through their whole plea. Yeah, so even if we weren't having, like even if it wasn't the corona times, we would, they would not be able to come off campus during the six weeks of their plea training. They would stay on campus. It's part of, it's part of breaking them away, you know, from family and like getting them working as a team. So, um, so that would happen. In, so, but yeah, this year for sure, they won't be, they, they definitely won't come home, not even um, normal, our regular cadets. Okay. What was the name of that postcard app? Oh, I've got two. Okay. It's one's post snap, P O S T S N A P. Post and snap. Yes. And they're, they work on my iPhone. They work on, on, on your phone, which is what I love about them because um, it makes it easy while I'm at a doctor's office or an appointment. I can be like sending one. And so don't tell him how much you miss him. Tell him about how awesome he is and how he can do this. And you believe in him and those kind of things. I, I actually looked up all these leadership quotes. So I also interspersed those onto the postcards. It became quite the hobby for me. Uh, and it really, it really helped me get through. And then when I was the buddy, it was like, I was called the uh, mail, the, the nice lady that works in the mail room. And we were talking about some stuff and she's like, and I said, oh yeah, I've been sending my son postcards. And she goes, wait, did you send a postcard of a tortoise? And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, um, yeah. And she goes, those are so cool. They were the coolest postcards I've ever seen. Everyone should send their kids those postcards. I'm like, okay, I'll let people know. So it's a uh, <laughs> room approved to these postcards. I'll, I'm trying to find the other one, but there's two of them. One of them does like a really big postcard and like can mm -hmm. do regular too. And then the other one does smaller postcards. So I had both of them going and trying them out. So it's a therapeutic. It, <laughs> it will help get you through time. <laughs> That's good. Anything else? Um, yeah. how, is it mandatory to be seen by the medical professionals there? You know how the teens have like their annual checkups? Do we have to use like campus doctors or can they still keep their primary? Well, so you're going to come in with a, you're going to need to do a health check at, with your regular doctor and you're, we're going to give you forms and you're going to fill those out. And if your son's an athlete, um, there'll be PIAA uh, forms to fill out for that. So I just take all those to my primary care physician for Sasha um, and then they fill that out. You will, when you come onto campus, there, there is going to be a check, but it's for Corona. It's, it's not a, a, like a wellness checkup it's more to make sure that we're not bringing on people onto campus that are sick. Okay. Well, okay, so he, he did have a, um, he did have that, that test done um, on the 16th of uh, this month, June. And, okay. and um, it, you know, it, it, it came back negative, so it was all good. Oh, that's the very corona, good. The corona, the uh, corona. Yeah, that's really good. So he'll, when they come onto campus, I know part of the check-in process will be some amount of making sure that people are well, and then we're going right. to socially distance people as they integrate into campus. And I think that stuff is maybe outlined in the link that Andrew posted. You're on a phone, so you may not be able to see that, but I believe that that's off. Um, Andrew, that, that information is off of our bfmac.edu page. Is that true? It is. It's bfmac.edu slash COVID. There you go. Just that easy. Because okay. I know Miss Virginia is coming in on a phone, so she may not have seen your great links that you were putting up in the chat window. <laughs> and will the, will the boys have roommates, even if we're trying to socially distance, just they have somebody that's they're with? So no. at the beginning, at the beginning, well, at the beginning, it's my understanding, and Andrew, again, correct me if I'm wrong, at the beginning, when they first come in and we're making sure everyone's healthy, I believe that they're going to be in an independent room during that first initial time. But then the mm -hmm. idea leaves to have roommates. Um, 
and, and some of our younger cadets are going to have roommates for sure, because we, we know that when you're going through something like this, having someone with you, like in it with you, like a brother is helpful. And so they will eventually have a roommate. So I can read it, but after the initial five days on campus, cadets, or during, excuse me, the initial five days on campus, cadets will be required to minimize contact outside of rooms with masks and practice the four pillars of public health. Once the cadets are tested and cleared, we'll begin to migrate the cadets into their designated long-term living arrangements, which may include a roommate. When it says may include a roommate, it means new kids are getting a roommate, and then the cadets who have been here a while might get a roommate. The ones that's complete will run barracks life in part um, similar to normal operations. Thank you. Go ahead, Jackie. So do the, do the new kids, are they paired up maybe with a roommate or a buddy that is somebody that's experienced that has a little bit of um, time there or is there any sort of system for that? I believe, and Andrew again can correct me if I'm wrong, that they are paired up by age, more age, that we never want someone who's like a seventh grader with a senior, because both of them would probably drive each other crazy, and that wouldn't be a good situation. So um, I think they, they do it by, com usually um, in the past, they've done it by company. So for example, if your son's in the regimental band or in field music, then they would maybe be paired up with somebody else who's in regimental band or in field music. A lot of our younger cadets end up in C Company, which is Sasha's company. And again, they get paired up. Those are seventh, eighth, and ninth graders, and they get paired up by age. So that they're going through it with somebody who's probably in classes with them, you know, so that they're together like that. Um, then on the floor, but don't, don't feel like, oh, he's going to be new and he's not going to have anyone to ask. Because living amongst them are the leaders in their various companies. So, so Sasha might be across the hall from like new plebes that are like coming in in C Company, for example. So they won't be a roommate necessarily, but I think going through that experience with somebody who's also going through that experience and rooming with them gives them a lot of like comfort and it gives them some support. You know, we're in this together. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? I love, see, I love this call because, you know, I've seen some of the other calls, Andrew, and there's only two people. And so this time we have like this great group of awesomeness here of like great questions and everybody has so much to ask and share. I haven't heard from, is it Ms. Lander? <laughs> How are you doing tonight? I'm good, thanks. Good. You just, you got it all down. Do you have any questions? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. I don't know. Um, there you go. Yeah. Here. The only thing, the only thing I was thinking is, um, um, somebody asked about like doctor's appointments or just using the, the, the health facility there. Um, what about like dental and orthodontist appointments? Do they leave campus for that or how do they handle that? Yes, we do. And so I'm going to talk about pre-corona. Like, yes, we have to leave because obviously my son has, my son has braces, right? So he needs yeah. to be seen once a month for that or once every six Mom. weeks. So, <laughs> yeah, so we pick him up and take him off for that. Andrew, I don't know how they're going to work that. Do you, have you heard how they're going to work orthodontist appointments? I have not, but we have a lot of teenagers with braces that don't live around here. And so <laughs> we have a local orthodontist that sees most of those cadets. And okay. I, don't, I imagine the orthodontist probably needs their tools and we'll just have to transport them over there and follow their protocols. So are you thinking that, they're, that they would do their like updates with this orthodontist that's local? So, okay. So anyway, so that's a, a I'll, the pre-corona stuff is no problem. You take them, pick them up. And the other thing is if your son gets really sick and you're local, are you local, Miss Lander? Yes. Yeah. So we're local too. Um, so when Sasha got sick and he got, I don't know, he had some kind of, a, I don't know if it was a flu or just something that was going around, which is sometimes happens. Um, they, they can ask you to come pick, you know, you want to pick him up because, you know, it's a lot more comfortable when he's hanging out with you and getting mom love. Sure, sure. <laughs> and be, although the medical team is amazing. And I, if I was sick, I'd probably want to hang out with them, but um, <laughs> they could take care of me. But, um, but yeah, they, they will ask you to come pick him up so that he can get well at home. Okay, thank you. If you're local. 
Yeah, we are. Yeah, we did the same thing to Tamara. We, we also did that for, uh, for Dad. Yeah. So, so you you would uh, actually take them to the to the orthodontic or the dentist? That's what you're saying. That's what we or did this last year, but that was before Corona. So the Corona right, right. <laughs> may may have a different, slightly different process. But once things get back to normal, the normal process is that if you needed to bring him out for a dentist or an orthodontist appointment or whatever, that you just swing by, pick him up, and take him. You know, you have to request leave, and you have to let people know, of course. But um, right. it was very work that okay because he has one this week so i don't know when he'll have another one maybe it'll be before he it might be before he comes up there to stay so he has one this thursday uh orthodontic one okay so yeah mine are, are i think sasha's are like every six weeks um so maybe he'll mm -hmm. get one or adjustment before he comes into school. Right, I got a little mixed up because you know everybody did with the COVID nineteen. So, right, it got I a little bit right. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't our top priority. The braces, all of a sudden, was not as big of a deal for us. <laughs> it's just day right. one. <laughs> Hi, Deanna. Yeah. You have a well, I just wanted to make sure it's perfectly fine because Jameer, his appointments are usually in the summertime. So I don't have time to play games during the school year. So we usually keep it during the summertime. So is that okay if it just stays during the summertime? He'll be yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, another question now, um, they'll be doing like different activities uh, on the weekends and after class and stuff like that during the week. Yeah, so there's all kinds of things to be involved in. So it always cracks me up when I hear somebody say, there's nothing to do on campus. And I laugh because no one can ever find my son, ever. Like my friends will go on campus and be like, we tried to find Sasha Christensen. Does he, he's never there. He's never in the cafeteria. He's never in any of Because he's always out and about doing so many things. I don't even, it's amazing how much stuff is available for them to do. So. He could be involved in sports. So in norm, I'm going to talk about normal times because right now we're not sure about what's going to go on with sports, with PIAA, um, and that's completely up to them. But we always have um, intramurals. So like there's always something physical going on after school that they can go participate in. There's always, there's sports going on. The fall is football, um, cross country, and soccer. So they could be involved in that. If they're involved in that, then they would go straight there and that's right after, and that's after school. And they do that until about dinner time. Andrew can correct, I know, will correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, and then um, the way we're, we're, I'm really excited this year, um, Colonel Rivera's kind of spicing things up and doing things a little different. He's actually got people doing their PT, their PE stuff in the morning. So they're getting up and doing all that. And what I love about that idea is because my son is like, got a high energy level as you saw by the drumming earlier and um is it's got so the attention stuff is hard for him if he's not worked out and and getting that workout in really helps him like kind of be able to really focus in the morning so we're going to do that in the morning now and so then that's going to kind of i think get everybody off on a really good start for their day and then mm -hmm. they're changing so we're doing our scheduling so we're doing slightly longer classes and we're doing them in blocks of four on one day for Andrew's, Andrew's giving the official answer. Did I say something? <laughs> I just thought the official answer is this. Okay. So, um, so then on, we're doing a, a modified schedule, a block schedule. So we've got a, um, like four classes on one day, um, three classes on, so that, that happens twice a week and then three classes on like Tuesday, Thursday. And then they see all their classes on Friday, just to kind of summarize and make sure everybody's caught up. So, uh, it's going to be a, a really cool way to do um, scheduling this year. They also allows them, they can, there's different options for electives. And I, I saw some really cool electives that are coming, going to be offered in addition to our normal ones. So um, they're always trying to improve things, always trying to offer um, different classes and meet people's needs. And it's really exciting to see what they're coming up with this year. I'm really impressed. Anybody got anything else? Can't even read. 
I hope. This has been really helpful, you guys. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure, Melissa. Are you going to come out to the coming out to um the um July 11th one? Are you going to come out to the? I'm, I'm betting we will. I was I had a call scheduled with Anna tomorrow, and one of my questions was, "Can we come and tour?" So, um, if there's yeah. a July 11th open house, I I bet we'll be there. Oh, I'd love to meet you in person. That'd be great, Jackie. Are you going to be able to come in? We actually took a tour uh, last. Tuesday. So, oh, good. Uh, and actually, we just enrolled today. So, oh, yeah. official. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, I know. You know, as you get to know me over the years, where your sons are right here, I get excited for your sons. I get excited <laughs> for you. I celebrate when your son gets a medal for something. I get really excited about that, right, Janine? I mean, it's just part of the way I am. I really get excited. So, um, so. I'm excited that you're part of our family. That's really great. And uh, what's what grade is your son in? Uh, he'll be going in ninth grade. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And then you do you live close? Yeah, we live in um, northern Maryland in Harford County, Maryland. Um, so we're about an hour and a half out. Uh, Good. That we, sounds like somebody who could be involved in parent. <laughs> yeah, we actually thought we were going to be doing the five day but it sounds like now we might not be so um, yeah i didn't want to i mean i don't want to be the one to say bad news or whatever and actually i think you actually it'll be good news i think it's it's a you know my son has loved it i have a hard time actually getting him to leave the campus is really the bigger issue he loves it so much there oh, yeah. he never wants to come home so so he really loves it Dean, are you going to be able to join us for? Yes. Yay! So it's going to be like a party, Miss Lander. Hopefully, she can come. And have you taken a tour of the campus? We're actually scheduled um, early next week. And Ethan, we did enroll him, and he was yeah. um, actually he had his audition for the band yesterday and got accepted into the regional regional oh, band. Yay! Yeah. I'm so excited. That's oh, awesome. that's exciting. Yeah. The band it's is very great. exciting because my son is also in the band. So um, that's awesome. It's really wonderful. Oh my goodness, this is such a fun call. <laughs> Andrew, this is the best call ever, right? Because we have like all these great people coming and being part of the family. It's going to be awesome. So, Deanna, I'm going to see you and Melissa, hopefully, see you. And then we're going to see um, Miss Virginia. And then we're going to yep. see Andrew and Miss Arden check in the fall when they drop off their awesome cadets. I'm excited. It'll be a great year, right, Andrew? It is. Always a great year. It is. It's 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 gonna be it's gonna be a different year, but it's gonna be great. It's just gonna be a great year. Any other questions? Honestly, I was just gonna say that I hope it's not echoing as bad as I'm hearing the echo for all of you, but I tell you that you will be so I know you don't know what you don't know right now. But I can tell you that as Brady and your sons, if they are, like I said, open and look for any change in the room, this is the perfect layout and situation for them. Um, and hopefully your son will have the same type of experiences, just like Sasha's, um, Sasha has, or uh, which is Sam's son. And I know what I can say that, that it helps for mine. We appreciate all of you because we don't exist without you. Uh, so uh, hopefully you will all feel free to come in. We are going to welcome you in all of our open arms. And we all look forward to seeing you. And don't hesitate to reach out to Pamela or any of us um, if, if you have any other questions as well. Exactly. I'm, I'm here to answer any questions. Um, everyone who signs up um, gets gets one of us with a as a as a pal to help you answer questions because i know when you're going through that packing list you're going to say do we really need 20 towels like what's up with that or do we really need whatever and we can tell you like yeah that's maybe not you don't need quite that many or maybe and we found this helpful in addition to what's on the packing list those kind of questions we can answer and make you feel more comfortable and then you know when things are when you're missing your son and you know you can't send him that I miss you like thing because that's you know you need to be positive you can call us and like talk to us or email us and we can say we've been there we understand that we totally get it we really do 
or we can sneak onto campus and take a picture or get one of the staff to take a picture. I've done that too, to make sure that you feel like you're connected and you're seeing him and, and that you're, you're proud of what he's doing because he's gonna change a lot in those six weeks. It's gonna be amazing, really amazing. He's gonna walk tall, right, Janine? Walk tall, that's lots of great posture. And he's going to get his room clean. I know you think that may be for, <laughs> oh, look at Deanna. She's like, uh-uh. Yeah, I didn't think so either, Deanna. I was sure that I would go down. If I had stepped into my son's room before he went to Valley Forge, I might have been lost and never found. But, and the, I'll tell you that last summer when he came home after six months at Valley Forge, it was not a change. It was still bad. But this year, when he came back in March, his room is immaculate. Very clean, very tidy very exciting <laughs> it can happen it could happen similar story right here so yes jackie did you have anything no nope. awesome miss lander anybody no you answered everything awesome well super appreciate you guys spending your evening with us and for those of you that have signed up to be part of the forge family i'm really excited to have you um with us and I look forward to seeing you guys and drop off and the rest of you that I'm gonna see on July 11th, I'm really excited about getting a chance to meet you in person. I look like this at the <laughs> with my mask on. So, it, so you may not recognize me. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys in person. Yeah, same here, thank you so much. Oh, good evening, Miss Virginia. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, I have a... Bye. Oh, I'd really like to share. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew. Andrew has something he wants to share with us. So good. <laughs> um, and it's it's young Jack Skelton, and we bought a new microphone and we wanted to do a mic'd up video. And I asked one of the cadet leaders, or the he was a cadet, but a leader of the plebes. I said, "Who's really a really good plebe that we could mic up for this ceremony?" And they said, "Oh, Skelton. You should mic him up." So I went over and introduced myself, and put a microphone on him, and then he won every award. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got this wonderful video, and I wanted to share it with y'all. Awesome. It's like a minute long. For the bronze physical training efficiency badge, we had one awarding. Awarded to the cadets who distinguished themselves by scoring over 240 points on the annual physical fitness test. Once again, Jack Skelton, eighth grader. Jack, congratulations. Thank you, sir. I don't remember. How many push ups did you do? 60. Yeah. I don't expect that to be a gold medal. That's, that's the new standard. Yes, sir. And what'd you run? What was your time? 6.30. Outstanding. Thanks, sir. I was, I was catching it. <laughs> Luckily, we only had five laps. I think I beat you. Yeah. Lead, up, hit, boot. And again, that was one of those moments when all of us in the audience were just so excited because we were cheering on Bennett, cheering on Cadet Skelton, so part of the family. So thank you for sharing that, Andrew. Yeah, maybe cry all over again. <laughs> Aww. Well, it was a pleasure meeting everybody. And um, I'm, if there's no other questions, then we'll let you go on to the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for sharing all your stories. And if you have any questions, and you want to reach out to me, please do so. Anna, just pop her an email. She'll give you my um, email address or Janine's. I'm sure Janine will be delighted to answer any questions you might have. And we're here for you guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks, you guys. Evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, y'all.